This is Viewpoint on Noyan Tapan TV, and I am Benjamin Bogosian. Today we will discuss two issues. First of all, the prospects of armenia turkey normalization process, and also we will touch upon the recent escalation in Balkans, in particular between Serbia and Kosovo. First of all, what we have on armenia turkey normalization process. After the agreement to open the border for third country citizens and also to start the air cargo flights between Armenia and Turkey, there were a lot of speculations and discussions that sides are very close to breakthrough. And the direct phone call between President Erdogan and Prime Minister Pashinyan seemed to confirm these expectations. However, in recent days, both Turkish Foreign Minister Çavuşoğlu and also Turkish President Erdogan made statements that Azerbaijan is still a red line for Turkey and Turkey will normalize its relation with Armenia if Armenia makes some concrete steps and if the issue of Azerbaijan is solved. So what does it mean the issue of Azerbaijan is solved or at least what does Turkish leadership understand on this? Most probably Turkey believes that Armenia should accept Azerbaijani demands on the content of future Armenia-Azerbaijan Comprehensive Treaty or as Azerbaijanis say about this, the Armenia-Azerbaijan Peace Treaty. We all know that Azerbaijan demands from Armenia that either Armenia recognizes that there is no Nagorno-Karabakh or the maximum accept that Nagorno-Karabakh should be part of Azerbaijan under some formal cultural autonomy. So, by stating that Turkey is ready to fully normalize relations with Armenia, to establish diplomatic relations, and also to fully open the land border only if Azerbaijan issue is solved, Turkey sends a message to Armenia that either you will accept Azerbaijani demands and will agree maximum for some cultural autonomy for Nagorno-Karabakh, which automatically will result in a very quick leaving of all Armenians which currently live in Nagorno-Karabakh, or there will be no armenia turkey normalization process. Of course, questions may arise that from the beginning of this new attempt to normalize armenia turkey relations, back in late 2021, both Armenia and Turkey they were stating numerous times that there are no preconditions, and we remember that after each meeting between special representatives, Mr. Ruben Ruminian and Mr. Kalic, the sites they published the identical statements telling that okay, Negotiations will continue and there are no preconditions. But apparently now Turkey speaks about precondition and this precondition is that Armenia should accept Azerbaijani demands on Nagorno-Karabakh issue. So what does it mean? Probably I believe that Turkey from the beginning was very clear, at least in the closed door negotiations, that the issue of Azerbaijan is very important for Turkey and the final solution of Nagorno-Karabakh is very important for Turkey. We should remember that in 2008-2009, during soccer diplomacy, uh, Turkey cancelled the process, arguing that Armenia should end the occupation of Azerbaijani lands. But from Turkish perspective, Azerbaijani lands are not only the seven regions outside the former Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region, Azerbaijani lands are also the territories which are currently under Russian control. I mean Stepanakert, Martakert, Martuni, Askeran. So from Turkish in perspective, nothing has been changed and, as usual, Turkey requires from Armenia to implement its precondition on Nagorno-Karabakh. So does it mean that negotiation process will be stopped? Most probably no, because all external actors, despite based on different views on different reasons, they support this normalization process. So most probably negotiations will continue, but given the recent messages which Armenia and the international community received from Turkey, most probably, it's uh, very low. There is a very low possibility that Turkey will agree to establish diplomatic relations with Armenia and fully open Armenia-Turkey land border as far as Azerbaijani demands or jointly Turkish-Azerbaijani demands are not met on Nagorno-Karabakh. And again, here, Azerbaijani and Turkish position is very, very clear. Armenia should accept that either there is no Nagorno-Karabakh or should accept some cultural autonomy for Nagorno-Karabakh. So it means that the current Armenia-Turkey process will continue, but uh, again, it's really problematic to hope that soon we will have the final normalization. Now let's speak about the recent escalation between Serbia and Kosovo. It all started yesterday evening, 
when uh, Kosovo stated that okay, it's not going to accept the Serbian car plates. So the Serbs who live in northern Kosovo, either they should uh, receive the Kosovo car plates and other documentation, or they will be perceived as the foreigners in Kosovo. Of course, the Kosovo issue is a, has a very long history. We all remember in 1999 when NATO bombed Serbia for more than three months and forced Serbia to de facto accept that Kosovo is not part of Serbia. However, legally, Serbia still believes that the Kosovo is a part of Serbia and there are many countries, among also the EU member countries like Romania and others, who still recognizes Kosovo as part of Serbia. And meanwhile, the European Union is uh, facing the problem of its enlargement in Western Balkans. Most probably this will be the last wave of enlargement of the European Union and in Western Balkans, the European Union needs partners. And in this case, Serbia, which has close relations with Russia, and Serbia, which rejected to impose sanctions on Russia after February 24, 2022, could be a problem for Europe. And in recent years, the European Union was sending clear messages to Serbia. If you want to become a part of the European Union and receive huge financial benefits and financial support, you should recognize Kosovo as an independent state. Of course, it's very difficult to state or to assess what the Serbian society thinks. Definitely there will be people who think that okay, let's recognize independence of Kosovo, but again, in that case we will have the European future for Serbia, Serbia will become an EU member state and we will access to the significant pool of European Union money. But of course also there are many forces in Serbia who say that no, Serbia should never recognize Kosovo as an independent state. So we have some sleeping conflict here, and any moment this conflict could rise. For example, in late 2021, we had the same situation. Again, the authorities of Kosovo made a statement that they are not going to recognize the Serbian car plates and other documentations. And Serbia and Kosovo were very close even for some military skirmishes. But then the EU uh, intervened and the decision was made that okay, we are going to postpone. And now the same happened yesterday evening when there were some clashes and when Kosovo closed some border crossings between Kosovo and Serbia. Then the US ambassador in Kosovo intervened and the US ambassador convinced the Kosovo authorities to postpone the implementation of the decision for one month. But it's, does it mean? What does it mean? It means that simply the situation which we had yesterday on July 31, most probably we will have the same situation on August 31. And I believe that all these are some attempts to put pressure on Serbia, telling that okay, Serbia should make a final decision. Is it going to support European Union or in general the West against Russia, or still it views itself as a part of Russian, as a zone of influence or as a part of a Russian world? So it's a really very difficult choices for Serbia, because uh, from one hand, uh, definitely Serbia is willing to be part of the EU and somehow to get access to this European Union funds and etc. But from another point, it will be very difficult for any Serbian politician to say that, okay, I'm going to recognize Kosovo as an independent state, especially if there are many, many states along besides Serbia, which do not recognize independence. So I believe that we will have another escalation uh, between Serbia and Kosovo in late August, but at the end of the day, Serbia should make a final decision. Is it going to accept the Western demands to recognize independence of Kosovo for uh, being a member of the European Union, or at least to start or to accelerate the process of membership to the European Union, or he will reject the independence of Kosovo and the situation in Western Balkans will be quite strained? Of course, we may say that from the Russian perspective, maybe the best outcome is that Serbia still insist that Kosovo is a part of Serbia, which means that there will be no uh, enlargement of European Union and Western Balkans, and there will be always a point of tensions. And here we speak not only about Serbia, but also Bosnia and Herzegovina, which after Dayton agreements still is not a fully functioning state. Uh, there are a lot of possibilities that at every moment there could be some skirmish, skirmishes also in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we see the new escalation in Balkans and let's see. But again, at the end of the day, this will be some choice for Serbian government. Either he will recognize Kosovo as independence and will accept the loss of Kosovo for European perspective, or it will continue to protect its national interests. And in that case, the situation in Western Balkans will be quite tensed. So everything for today. Thank you and we will meet soon.